Hello everyone. Today I'll be presenting a paper on the cervical spine MRI findings in Hirayama disease under the guidance of Dr. Tushar Kalikar, Professor, Department of Radio Diagnosis at Dr. D.Y. Patel Medical College Hospital and Research Center in Pune. The primary aims and objectives of the study were to assess the prevalence and clinical presentations of Hirayama disease in the local population, to assess the imaging findings and to ascertain the most common and objective findings for diagnosis and to classify the various cervical spine MRI findings based on the extent of involvement. Hirayama disease is a rare type of cervical myelopathy caused by trauma from flexion of movements of the neck. It typically occurs in young Asian males in their second or third decade. The underlying etiology is considered to be necrosis of anterior horn cells due to chronic microcirculatory changes in the anterior spinal artery territory induced by repeated or sustained neck flexion. It typically presents with unilateral weakness and amyotrophy of the distal upper limb in the hand and forearm with sparing of the sensory nerves. Occasionally, coarse tremors can also be seen. The disease usually progresses for three to five years and then has a stationary phase. On MRI in neutral position, intramedullary high signal intensity on T2-weighted images and subtle asymmetrical lower cervical cord atrophy can be seen. However, MRI with cervical flexion is more sensitive and shows forward displacement of the posterior dura with increased laminar dural space and post-contrast enhancement of a crescent-shaped posterior dural sac. Prominent epidural flow voids may also be seen on cervical flexion. The place of study was Dr. D.Y. Patel Medical College Hospital and Research Center in Pune. It was a retrospective cross-sectional study over a period of six years, starting from January 2017 to December 2022. A total of 13 patients with Hirayama disease were found on a review of the hospital PAC system. Uh, patients of all age groups who had a principal diagnosis of Hirayama disease on MRI were included, while patients who had not undergone MRI with cervical flexion or had inconclusive imaging findings for Hirayama disease were excluded. Standard cervical spine protocol was used, which included axial, sagittal, and coronal T2-weighted images and axial and sagittal T1-weighted images, with additional sagittal and axial T2-weighted images taken on cervical flexion. Eight of the 13 patients had undergone a contrast study, and post-contrast T1 sagittal and T1 axial images were also available. <clears throat> the following results were obtained. The first table shows the sex distribution of the patients. Among the 13 patients study, uh, almost 92% that were that is 12 of the 13 patients were male and only a single uh, female patient was studied the second table shows the age distribution of patients the majority of the patients were young with nine patients aged between 16 and 25 years of age and only two patients between 26 and 35 years of age the youngest was a girl uh, of seven years and the oldest was a 75 year old male the third table summarizes the presenting clinical symptoms of patients Upper limb weakness was the most common symptom seen in around 92% patients. It was unilateral in seven patients and bilaterally asymmetric in five patients. Upper limb muscle atrophy was the second most common symptom seen in around 54 patients. It was unilateral in four patients and bilateral in three patients. One patient each presented with unilateral and bilateral upper limb tremors, which was a relatively rare symptom. A seven-year-old female child presented with the atypical symptom of bilateral clawing of hands. Table 4 summarizes the MRI findings seen in patients. All patients showed excessive forward shifting of the posterior dura on flexion with resultant cord compression. One patient showed only mild com cord compression without signs of myelopathy, while 12 patients showed cervical cord compression with an abnormal T2 hyperintense cord signal and asymmetric cord atrophy. The levels at which patients showed forward shift of the posterior dura and cord compression have been summarized. All 13 patients showed increased laminodural space on flexion. The maximum laminodural distance, that is the anterior posterior distance, seen in patients on flexion, and the length, which is the craniocaudal distance of increased laminodural space, is also summarized in the uh, fourth table. Prominent epidural flow voids on flexion were also seen in approximately 46% patients. All eight patients who underwent the contrast study showed enhancement of the epidural component on flexion. Now moving on to a few images from the patients included in the study. The first set of images shows the type of intramedullary cord hyperintensities. The uh, image A shows subtle T2 intramedullary cord hyperintensity. Image B shows a unilateral hyperintensity, whereas image C shows bilateral hyperintensity on T2 weighted axial images. <laughs> the uh, next set of images shows cord compression and various stages of myelomalacia. The first set of images A and D show cord compression without abnormal cord signal intensity. The second set of images B and E show cord compression with abnormal cord intensity. 
whereas the last set of images C and F show chord compression with chord atrophy. Image A shows uh, the next set of images shows an uh, extent of maximum AP thickness of laminodural space on flexion. The first image shows mild increase in laminodural space thickness, approximately 0.23 centimeters. The second image shows moderate increase in the laminodural space, uh, approximately 0.41 centimeters. And the third image shows severe increase in the laminodural space, approximately 0.52 centimeters. The next set of images shows the craniocardial extent of the increased laminodural space on flexion. The first image shows mild craniocardial extent. The second shows a moderate craniocardial extent. And the last image shows a severe craniocardial extent of the increased laminodural space. The last set of images shows contrast enhancement of the posterior epidural space. In this, the first set of images in the top row show a, present, show a patient with markedly increased laminodural space on the flexion T1 sagittal image, showing post-contrast enhancement on sagittal as well as axial images. The second set of images in the bottom row show contrast enhancement in a case with mild increase in laminodural space in image D, moderate increase in laminodural space in image E, and severe increase in laminodural space in image F, with post-contrast enhancement seen in all these three cases. Hirayama disease was first described by Japanese neurologist Kizo Hirayama in 1959. The entity is also called juvenile muscular atrophy of the distal upper extremities. Hirayama disease is a male-prone condition occurring most commonly between 15 and 25 years of age. It is characterized by unilateral and asymmetric bilateral weakness of the hand and forearm muscles supplied by C7 to T1 myotomes and sparing of the brachioradialis muscle. There is no lower limb involvement or sensory disturbance. Although the pathogenesis is unknown, the currently accepted theory is disproportionate growth between the length of the spinal cord and the length of the spinal column during growth spurt, which leads to excessive anterior bulging of the posterior dura during neck flexion. Long-term compression of the cervical cord due to tightness of the dural sac during flexion leads to microcirculatory changes in the region supplied by the anterior spinal artery, causing ischemia and necrosis of the anterior horn cells. Our study shows Hirayama disease has a male preponderance, with 16 to 25 years age group being the most affected. Among the two atypical presentations, one was a seven-year-old female with claw hand deformity, asymmetric upper limb weakness, and muscle atrophy. Another was a 75-year-old male patient with unilateral upper limb weakness. Based on the imaging findings, which showed asymmetric lower cord atrophy, intramedullary hyperintensity on T2-weighted images, and prominence of the posterior epidural space on flexion images, a diagnosis of Hirayama disease was suspected. Upper limb weakness was the most common clinical symptom seen in around 92% patients. It was unilateral in 7 patients and asymmetric bilateral in 5 patients. Only one patient did not complain of weakness but had unilateral upper limb pain and tremors instead. Distal muscle atrophy was the second most common symptom seen in 7 patients. 4 had unilateral and 3 had bilateral weakness. Tremors in the hand was a rare symptom seen unilaterally and bilaterally in one patient each. On MRI in a neutral position, the condition is suspected if there is asymmetric cord flattening and atrophy of the lower cervical cord. The presence of intramedullary high signal intensity on T2-weighted images is also a presenting feature. An MRI with neck flexion is recommended in suspected cases. There is a characteristic forward shifting of the posterior dura during neck flexion. Most patients with Hirayama disease have a crescent-shaped loss of attachment behind the posterior dura, which may show post-contrast enhancement. Prominent epidural flow voids may also be seen on flexion. Among our 13 cases, 12 showed the presence of high signal intensity on T2-weighted images and asymmetric cervical cord atrophy on neutral MRI. Only one patient showed cord compression and had not yet developed abnormal cord intensity on presentation. Uh, or, or, uh, this demonstrates that most cases have progressed to the stage of chronic myelomalacia at the time of initial presentation. A high degree of awareness and suspicion should be exercised to diagnose Hirayama disease at an early stage. Abnormal cord intensities were seen bilaterally in six patients, unilaterally in one patient, and subtle hyperintensity in five patients. Abnormal forward shift of posterior dura and cord compression was seen of the C3-C5 level in one patient, C4-C6 level in three patients, C4-C7 level in one patient, C5-C6 level in four patients, and C5-C7 level in four patients. On MRI with flexion, all 13 patients showed increased laminodural space. This suggests that increased laminodural distance on flexion images is one of the best imaging features for diagnosing Hirayama disease. We have further classified the extent of increased laminodural space based on the maximum anterior posterior thickness and length of involvement. On flexion MRI, 
three patients showed increased thickness of 2.1 to 3 mm, seven patients showed thickness of 3.1 to 5 mm, and three patients showed thickness of 5.1 to 7 mm. The mean thickness was 4.08 mm, with the minimum and maximum thickness being 2.4 mm and 6.7 mm respectively. Next, classifying by length of anterior bulging dura, one patient showed involvement of fewer than two vertebral body segments, eight patients showed involvement of two to four vertebral body segments, and four patients showed involvement of more than four vertebral body segments. <clears throat> Recent shared post-contrast enhancement on flexion was seen in all eight patients who underwent the contrast study. Prominent epidural flow words on flexion were seen in approximately 46% patients. Although Hiraima disease is considered a benign condition with a stationary course, Studies have shown that it can cause serious dysfunction if not treated early. Therefore, restriction of neck flexion conventionally by neck collar support or by surgical method is the main treatment for Hirayama disease. <clears throat> the Shiro et al. conducted a nationwide epidemiological study of patients with Hirayama disease in Japan, which has information on the number of patients affected per year, distribution of age of onset, neurological symptoms and signs, and effects of conservative treatment. There was a marked male preponderance. The P case group affected was 15 to 17 years and showed slow onset and progression, predominantly involving unilateral forearm and hand with cold paresis. In a study by Huang et al., a review of 40 patients with Hirayama disease was done in Taiwan. Overall, 87% patients uh, were male and the mean age of onset was 16.8 years. Progressive distal muscle weakness and atrophy were seen predominantly in the right upper limb with, with cessation of progression within five years. About one third of the patients had a history of heavy physical activity before the development of symptoms. MRI showed anterior shifting of the posterior dura. Due to their occurrence after the peak age of the normal age curve, it is postulated that disproportionate growth between the vertebral column and the spinal canal contents could be the underlying cause and strenuous activity could be a precipitating factor. The conclusion uh, is that hiramide is, is an uncommon type of cervical myelopathy seen typically in juvenile males. The occult onset of the distal upper limb weakness and atrophy during puberty, typical MRI features of lower cervical cord atrophy, and the presence of a crescent-shaped enhancing mass in the posterior epidural space are pathognomic of the condition. A few atypical cases can also occur, as described in the study. Early diagnosis and treatment are crucial to avoiding serious dysfunction. Thank you.